Greetings, Terrarians, Chaos here. I had to take a few days off because the apartment complex that I live in was cutting down some trees right outside of my building and it was far too loud to record. So I decided to use that time to set up my brand new microphone. Hopefully it sounds even better than my last one did. Today I'm going to be kicking off a short series where I build nice houses for all of the new biome pylons added to the game, starting with the cavern pylon. In addition, I'm going to be talking about some of the new underground mini biomes and materials. But first, I wanted to give a huge thank you to all of my new supporters both on Patreon and here in YouTube memberships. This isn't something that I bring up often, but I've seen quite a few new people supporting the channel in the past week and I seriously cannot thank you all enough for helping to keep this channel going. If anybody would like to support the channel, you can click on the blue join button that's found beneath this video or on the Patreon link in the description below. As a thank you for the pledge, there are several rewards that I offer, but if that's not of interest to you, I still want to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. For this build, I will be using several new 1.4 items found within the cavern layer of the world. I wanted to quickly go over these and how you can get them for your own builds, starting with the focal point of this video and the series, the pylon. I'm sure that most of you know what pylons are by now, but if you don't, a pylon is a teleportation piece of furniture that you can use to teleport to another pylon by means of your map. A pylon requires two town NPCs to be living nearby for you to use it, with the exception of one pylon which I'll talk about towards the end of the series. Pylons can be purchased from happy NPCs. Since we're looking at the underground variant today, let's talk about that specifically. To purchase the cavern pylon, you need to interact with an NPC that sells items while they are underground. While they don't have to have maxed out happiness, they do need to have it boosted somewhat. Town NPCs can be happy either by being near other NPCs that they like or love, or by being within biomes that they like or love. You don't need to have all of these conditions met to purchase a pylon, but you will most likely need to avoid housing these NPCs near other town NPCs that they hate or within biomes that they hate. So for the cavern biome, if you place either the clothier, goblin tinkerer, or demolitionist underground and you don't house them near any disliked NPCs, then you will be able to buy the cavern pylon. Now let's talk about some of the materials of the build. One of the new plants that you might encounter during your underground explorations is a gem tree. Each of the seven gem types has a tree to match it, and when you chop one down, it will drop some stone blocks with the occasional gem and some gem corns, which are used to plant more gem trees. In addition, when these are nearby, new types of special squirrels and bunnies have a chance to spawn. If you see glowing eyes in the darkness, don't freak out as these critters are completely harmless. Similar to gem trees, there are versions of these to match each of the available gem types, including amber which is now capable of generating in the world instead of only being available through the extractinator. To plant a gem tree, you need to place a gem corn on top of a stone block. This includes pearl stone, crimstone, ebon stone, and any of the mossy stone blocks. You will not be able to place gem corns on top of any other tile. While you can place a gem corn up on the surface, it will only grow into a tree when it's placed underground, so you cannot get gem trees on the surface, but you can still use the saplings as decorations. Sometimes these trees can be difficult to find, especially if you're looking for a specific type, but thankfully we are also able to craft gem corns for ourselves. All you need is an acorn and a gem. The type of gem that you use will determine the type of gem corn that you create and you don't need any of the crafting stations to make these, it can be done straight out of your inventory. So that covers the gem trees, but I will also be using some of the new moss in the build today and there are new mini biomes associated with it that I wanted to talk about. In previous versions of Terraria there was only one type of glowing moss, which was the lava moss. Journey's End adds three more. Argon Moss, Xenon Moss, and Krypton Moss. These are semi-rare mini biomes as only a few of them generate in each world. Additionally, your world can only generate one type of these mosses at a time, which means that to obtain all three of them, you'll need to go to multiple worlds. Thankfully, however, moss is actually obtainable in this update. 
in the past, you had to get moss either by waiting for it to spread naturally, or you had to use the Staff of Regrowth to spread the nearest moss color onto a stone. While the Staff of Regrowth no longer works in this update, this isn't a bad thing in my opinion. Now you're able to actually obtain moss into your inventory and take it to other locations or worlds with you. To get moss, you first need to visit the Painter NPC and purchase a Paint Scraper. This will be the tool that you use to harvest the moss. When you find a patch of it, you'll notice that it works similar to the way that grass does, meaning that not only does it have a block version, but it has a tall growing version on top of that block. This tall moss is what we need to harvest. Take your paint scraper to the tall moss and it will occasionally drop an item for you to plant. This also works when using the specter version of the paint scraper. Don't worry if you only get one item though, as moss still spreads naturally over time. Another change to moss in this update is that tall moss can grow above ground. In the previous update, if you got moss onto the surface, it would never grow the tall variant. This is no longer the case, which means you can easily create moss farms anywhere in your world. One other big change to moss is that it doesn't just work on stone block now. As of 1.4, moss can grow onto gray brick, and this looks really good in my opinion, especially with the new moss variants. These mossy brick blocks work the same way that stone block versions do. They can spread moss to other stone or gray bricks, and tall moss grows on top of them. Unfortunately, this option is only available to the gray brick, which I can understand why, but it would look so good on other brick variants. Next up, for the upcoming build, I will be using some of the previously unobtainable natural walls, which I'm not going to talk about too much in detail for this video because I've already covered that before. If you're curious about how you can get them, I recommend checking out my graveyard mini biome video, which I will leave a link to in the description below. Please don't demonetize me YouTube. The last material that I'm going to talk about before getting into the actual build is something that was also previously unobtainable in older versions of Terraria. When you're adventuring underground, you will often encounter various gems that are laid into stone. In the past, you weren't able to actually obtain the block version of these, as breaking them yields gems only. While breaking them still only gives you gems now, you can use those gems plus some stone to craft the block versions again. Grab a heavy workbench and head into the demonetization mini biome. This crafting option will only be available when you're standing within this foggy area. You'll see that you can combine some stone blocks with some gems to get the gemstone blocks. Just keep in mind that if you later mine these, they will only drop the gems, so you will lose out on a little bit of stone each time you need to break these. Now that I've covered all of the new items that will be the focus of today's build, let's hop straight underground and get into the build. So today I think I'm going to be building an underground mine slash gem tree farm. I want to see if I can make that work with some glowing moss and stuff like that. I've scouted out a good area to do the build and I'm happy with this area over here, though I need to clear some of it out. Now I could do the old school method of using the drill containment unit and it works, it works. But if you haven't been introduced to the new gun, the Celebration Mark II in this update, uh, it, it's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so um, if I equip some mini nukes, but any of the explosive rockets will do this as well. And I use this weapon just here, let me just zoom out and show you. This is the most destructive item I have ever seen in Terraria. It just melts whatever block is on screen within seconds. And it's absolutely glorious. I'll probably end up using the drill containment unit in the future because it's a little bit more precise than this but this will definitely be the go-to way for me to clear out large areas of blocks in very little time. Alright, so I took a lot of time filling in this area with a bunch of stone just to get it the shape that I want to. I'll probably end up expanding it in some areas, condensing it in some areas as well. And I think I want to have maybe multiple layers to the gem tree farm, but we'll see. 
Um, over here is a pathway that you can go to explore more of the world. This pathway will take you back up to the surface with some more exploration options. So what I'm going to be doing is maybe building a small entrance over here and maybe a rope bridge. But first, what I want to do is have a little elevator. This doesn't go all the way up to the surface because obviously we're building something for the pylons. I don't need to actually have something that goes up to the surface because eventually we'll just be able to teleport around. However, I want it to make it look like this could go up to the surface and I'm going to be building a small elevator shaft going all of the way up here, at least uh, to cutting off maybe around here and then visually I'll continue it up here where it should leave the screen. And on that elevator, which I'm gonna put down here, obviously it won't be working, but I will be putting the cavern pylon on top of that because I think it would be an interesting look to make it look like they're carving out all of the gems in this area, the gem trees, they're harvesting and mining all of the valuable stuff here. And they found this large crystal just kind of mysteriously floating. And I'll probably have it placed on top of some rocks on top of the elevator and they're about to hoist it up to the surface. So that's what I'm going to be going for. So the elevator is now completed and I wanted to go with as many new materials as possible for something like this. So instead of doing brown painted dynasty wood, I went with a large bamboo and I love the way that it looks. This might be one of my favorite materials in terms of appearance. Now I do, I do love gray sandstone, but I'm really, really digging large bamboo. Speaking of gray sandstone, I decided not to go with it too much in this cave, as great as it would look, because I would definitely use more than a thousand of it. It would definitely turn this into an underground desert, and this pylon would no longer work. Uh, behind the pylon, I decided to go with wrought iron fence instead of iron fence or lead fence, because again, I want to use as many new materials as I could. Up here in the elevator shaft, I have a little door here keeping you from going up because I didn't want to complete the entire elevator shaft all of the way up. If you download the world and want to do it yourself, feel free. The world download won't be made available until the pylon builds are all complete. Over here, I've lined the sides of the elevator shaft with some large bamboo and some stone accent slab. The reason why I went with stone accent slab here is because if I just left this as stone block, it wouldn't look as good. I want to have these little bits of wood supports going into the side wall. And you can see here, if I replace this, oh, I didn't mean to paint that though. Well, let me just turn off my paint sprayer, and get rid of that paint so you can see it a little bit better. And if I replace the stone accent slab right here, you can see that the large bamboo does blend in with the stone and it appears to be small bamboo right in here. And it doesn't look very supportive. It doesn't give the look that I'm trying to do. I also tried it out with some dynasty wood in that kind of segment and that didn't work out very well either. It's a little bit better, but not a whole lot. In the end, I decided it was best if I could separate the uh, large bamboo from the stone just a little bit. And I did that by using the stone accent slab, which is a material that looks like stone slab, but has the old legacy style blending uh, as they changed the way that stone slab blends with other blocks. So up next, I'm going to be working on detailing the cave i want to make small segments up here down here create a false foundation area over here and just basically landscape where everything is going to be i want to have a lot of floating rocks that are supported by uh basically some background walls and what i'm going to be using are the uh, mottled stone wall the craggy stone wall and the worn stone wall with gray paint on all of them to just kind of make little stone pillars and blend them together and that's what I did up here in the elevator shaft as well and that gives a really nice rocky texture that's also a wall so you can walk in front of it without colliding all right so things are looking pretty good in here obviously I have the gym trees and I was thinking about it before I actually got to uh, placing the walls and I realized that I had to actually place and grow all of the trees first 
because if I throw down background walls, then they wouldn't be able to grow. So I went ahead and I got uh, probably about a dozen or so trees planted around the area. And then I worked on making all of these little pillars with the background walls and it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm really happy with this. So what I think I'm going to be doing is having one house here and possibly with a ladder or an elevator leading down here so that anybody that plays this world can do some exploration. Maybe a small house up in this area. I might carve into the uh, the ceiling of this cave a little bit more and maybe have the house on some stilts. And then over here, another house right in here or maybe just a storage shed or maybe a little bit of both. Since I have this minecart track running through the center of it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to make this a valid NPC house. So I would have to make this two stories. So I'm not sure. I do want to have a building here. I'm just not sure if it'll be a valid house or not. And I did go ahead and throw down this minecart track just because I thought it would be a good idea to make this feel more like a mine where you could kind of take your minecart track around. Now obviously since I can't run the track through the chains, I wanted to have a little bit of a jump in here so that you could still reach each of the track tracks from it. I had considered maybe doing something like this and uh, without paint obviously. Um, doing something like this, it would help if I had my tools in the right order, there we go. Uh, where there's a gap in the chains and then maybe I fill in that gap with some fence of some sort But I don't know how I feel about that. It's not terrible But it's also not amazing The more I look at it the more I like it What I don't like is this link right here being round while everything else is kind of thinner I do like the way that the wrought iron fence looks in here as a chain link just not sure how I feel about that one link right there and obviously there would be another one right around here somewhere so I could go like this I'll, I'll think about it I'll leave it like this for now and I'll decide if I like that more with the jump or more without the jump later there's nothing quite like a nice rest after a hard day's building but of course I'm not even done yet obviously the houses are now done I do have three of them here, even though you only need two to make a pylon work. I just thought that these three spots looked ideal for houses. Now technically this looks good and I could be done with this as is, but what I want to do is a lot of work to the landscaping and environment. And what I'm thinking about doing is grabbing some dirt and throwing this around in various places making some of this look like it has some dirt and i also want to throw in some moss uh, specifically some glowing moss i might do other kinds of moss as well but we'll see i'll experiment around with that and see how i like it also i have all of these little torches here and these are here for your viewing benefit obviously if i were building in this cavern without them it would be incredibly dark and it would be hard to tell what i'm doing especially anybody that's watching on a mobile device as you can see it gets really dark here and what i'm hoping will look good is that once i start getting to decorating the landscape with the glowing mosses and I also have things like this hanging brazier right here so we could throw that down in some places um, maybe some caged lanterns uh, and top of posts or stuff like that I'll figure out how to light this place up a little bit more naturally so obviously these torches here are all just temporary Okay, so I experimented around with placing a piece of wrought iron fence behind the tops of these trees and then hiding a colored torch behind that to kind of make them glow, but it's a little bit too bright for my tastes. I thought the uh, glow idea was nice, but it would be better if I had a more dim light. So I'm going through and I'm getting rid of all of these little torches that I placed back here because I don't think it's a perfect fit. It was a worth, a, worth an attempt though. 
now though the build is pretty much complete I believe I placed some more of these uh, gem coins around I placed some raw gems around I've got some gem stones in various different locations I decided to just go with two of the glowing mosses so I didn't have too much color popping out at you I had all four at one point and then I tried three and eventually I just settled on two so yeah I'm very happy with how everything's looking here I've got some caged lanterns around to light up the area so you can see it it's very ambient in here I have single bits of gem walls here in the background and these are just these stone walls that we have and they blend in really nice with the rocks but also create a little gem which makes this feel even more loaded down with gems and that's going to wrap up my cavern pylon build be sure to check back onto the channel later for more pylon focused videos and 1.4 content I'll be making the world save available at the end of the series because I want to have the full network of pylons done so there won't be a way to get this build just yet. If you enjoyed the video let me know by leaving a like and a comment and please consider subscribing to the channel it really helps me out. Thank you all very much for watching and for all of the amazing feedback you've been giving me over the past week of journeys and videos. I look forward to more fun builds with you all. Catch you all later, happy building.